second. So I have a question. What do the what does this cable, this Cisco con well, off-brand Cisco console cable, um, this code reader, and this programming cable have in common? Well, it's that these all most likely have the same CH340 chip inside of them. And today we're going to be talking about this programming cable, and we're also going to be discussing my radios. But first, what does the CH340 cable even do? Well, it's a USB serial interface. For this, well, if you don't know what this is, this is a Cisco console cable. Well, it's a console cable. Not This one's not by Cisco, but Cisco is, from what I know, the most common, they are the most commonly ones that use these. Um, so, like, um, you'll see them on their switches, on their routers, on... They have them on a bunch of things. And basically how this works, so this is also called a Yoast cable. So basically how this works is you have your RJ45 connector here. This um, connects into your console port. And then this connects into your computer. You open up PuTTY or some other terminal software. And then you can interface with it over USB. Um, other, oh, sorry. Um, there's also like, you can also use a, just a flat rollover cable. Um, it kind of looks like a phone cable that has the RJ45 connector on it. And then you can use that to um, connect or whatever you can use. If your computer has a serial port, you can use that and a RJ45 to RS-232 adapter uh, or DB9 adapter. And yeah, this uses a terminal interface or a serial com interface to communicate with its software NT Wonder. Um, and in fact, like if you want to dump the data off of this, it has a function called print, and what it does is it just dumps it out as a terminal on the terminal line or whatever. Um, and then this, which we'll discuss, um, uses a serial interface to interface with the radios. So let's put these aside, except for this for now. So just hold on a second. I'm going to blank the screen because where is, wait a second, there we go. And yes, I'm using OBS to record this again. Because it's much easier and I'm going to show you some stuff on the screen. And I don't want to use my phone. So I'm going to set those off to the side. Uh, all right. So here is this cable, and here are these radios. Now, this one is one that I've had, this is one of my ones that I've had for a while. The battery doesn't stay in for some reason, uh, but I mean, these have done well. I do like them. They work. Uh, I'm trying to think of praise, I don't know. And then here we have, this is a new one that I just bought, um, uh, brand new or whatever from Amazon. Um, and I think I might screw up the programming. I don't know. Um, we'll look at that later. But, so as you can see, they're basically the same. And so I recently got this as well. It actually came with this 
I actually bought it at the same time I bought this. So this allows me to program them through the computer. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So first, I take, sorry, I'm holding the web, crap. Sorry, I'm holding, I was holding the webcam in my mouth. Okay, first we take, you take this and you plug it in. Sorry. Okay, you plug that in to it. You take this end, which contains your serial interface, and you plug it into your USB port. I want to plug it into the dock in this case. Um, and if you're wondering how this shows up, hold on, let me pull up Device Manager. Look at the phone for a bit. Hold on. Oh wait, my keyboard's off, that's right. Switch back to that. As you can see, this shows up as a as a USB serial CH340. That's the chip uh, assigned to COM7. So this is the soft. This is one of the softwares I'm going to be showing. This is Chirp. It's an open source piece of software used for managing these radios. Um, I also am going to show off this UV5R series program software from Baofeng. Um, so first, we're we're going to demonstrate this with Chirp. So before we mess with the radio, I do have my own custom programming already done. So uh, it stores it as a .img file. I don't know why it stores it as that. And um, you can see I can set pretty much all the, a lot of the settings in here. I have more settings that are on the, that are on, sorry. There are more settings in this software than there are on the radio itself. So as you can see, I can change different settings. I can tell you, I can tell what I want it to be on when I send the program. Um, actually, that I can set it. This is basically how I can set it to what I want it to do after it's program after I run the program. So, yeah, so let's, I'm going to demonstrate how you connect to a radio. So, let's go back to my camera. Hold on, sorry. I should have prepared a little bit more for this video, but... It was kind of a spur of the moment thing. All right, so let's go back to the camera. OK, 
Okay. And so what you do then is you turn the radio on, and it ha so it has to be plugged in first. It has to be plugged into this first before you turn it on. You turn the radio on. Um, it's set to turn the volume all the way up to 100 and make sure that it's on a clear channel. So I'm going to put this back on 9. Um, and by the way, these are mixed up. CL, so the one that's labeled Cobra is supposed to be actually for the C, the CLS radio, my Motorola CLS radios, and the one that's labeled Cobra is for my generic walkie-talkies or whatever. Um, but yeah, so um, I am going to download the program. And remember, it has to be on a clear channel. It cannot be receiving anything or sending anything when you do this. So as you can see, it is clear. And I am going to, because I want to kind of show you how the radio is going to act. So let's, let's see. Uh, we'll go quickly to the display capture. So we're going to click radio. Download from radio, and select my port, and then I'll hit OK. And I'm going to switch to the camera so you can see what happens. Okay. Where is my camera? Why am I so bad at this? Sorry, it's just. There. Alright. So I'm going to hit OK, and you can see what will happen on the radio. As you can see, the red light, it starts flashing that red light as it's reading. It's grabbing it from the radio. And as soon as it's done, you'll flash green, and this will reboot. And if I go over to display capture, as you can see, it pulled the information off that radio, which in this case is the exact same as um, as radio one 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 because it's basically the same. software or whatever. So yeah, as you can see, you can set your frequencies um, here. You can set your um, settings for like when you're transmitting. So like in this case, I have it set up so that it has a filter put on it. Um, I can set my modes. I can set the transmit power. I can set all this stuff up here. And then I can go into settings. And so here's some of this. So you can set your squelch, your battery saver, backlight timeout, transmitter timeout. Um, what it displays is to if you want to set it to like display the um, name of what you set it in the software, or if you want to display something else, or like the frequency. Um, what are my options? Channel, free, name, and frequency. So I can display. If I go to advanced, oh wait. Oh, and you can also set your display colors for different modes and your Roger Beep as well. I go into advanced settings, Vox sensitivity, dual watch. That basically means that um, if I go back to camera here, if I'm on, even if I'm on this bottom one, this top one will still come receive. Same with if it's the other way around. And that's indicated by the S logo there. So let me go back. 
um, I can tail squelch eliminate. Um, I can turn off if I want to be able to get broadcast FM radio, if I want to be able to switch into that mode. Busy channel lockout. Um, alarm, like the alarm siren mode. I can set the priority of that dual watch. Um, yeah. Um, I can set, so these are my other settings, so I can set the power on message, which I, I you saw I set. Um, in this case, it's set to 3212 radio. I can set the um, upper and lower limits for the trans, for the received, um, the RX and TX or whatever of it. Um, I can set the, also the UHF limit, and I can also disable transmitting. So I don't think I really need to be transmitting on uh, VHF. I just don't. So I have that disabled. And then I can transmit on UHF because that's where my walkie talkies are. Um, and I can set if I want my power on message to display a message or if I want to display the full like lamp test or whatever. So at work mode, this is what it's currently set to. So you can see right here. Um, sort of settings, DTMF settings, etc. Um, so yeah. Um, so that's this one. Um, now let's get the older one, or the newer one, I mean. So, basically when you upload to the radio, it's basically the same process. So I will demonstrate that now. So upload to radio, you see, you hit OK. And I'm going to put the camera in front of the radio again. And if I hit OK... You can see the green, it starts flashing green. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it flashes green. And if I go back to the display, it says cloning to radio. So let's go to camera overlay. As you can see, as soon as we're done, it'll flash green and reboot. So, I'm going to disconnect this now. Um, just give me a second. We'll put you back on wait. Um, sorry, this video is very disorganized. I'm kind of doing it off the cuff, as you know how I usually do my videos. Let's go back to the camera. So this is my brand new one, as you can see. Um, not really that different from, it, it's basically the same. Um, the only weird thing is, for some reason, I can't transmit on GMRS or whatever, or like on the frequencies that my walkie-talkies use. So, um, I don't know if that's something that I screwed up in programming or something like that. If anyone who knows how these radios work is watching this and are this far into the video, um, please let me know. But I can't transmit on GMRS. So we're going to take our cable and I'm going to plug it into this. So I'm going to set you down. And you can look at the phone again while I plug it in.
as you can see, we're plugged in, and we're going to turn it on to 100, and we're going to turn the volume all the way up. We're going to make sure we're on a clear frequency. All right. So we're on a clear frequency now, and now I'm going to show off the other software the Baofeng UV5R series program software. So I'm going to switch my displays again. And as you can see, I'm in the software. So this is like its default config. I did not put any of this information in. So if I read from, so I can do control, I can read from radio. Oh, you first have to set the correct communications port. And this one, it's a radio button that gets set. But okay, so here we go. I didn't, don't know why it failed that time, but as you can see, it actually tells you what it's reading in this case. Um, oh, and when it's done, let me turn the audio back on. you'll actually get a ping, whatever. So as you can see here, it just loaded in. And so this is a bit different from the, uh, what's this called, um, chirp or, or whatever. So, but you do, I feel like get a little bit more selection here. I feel like you do get the option to set if you want it to lock out on busy. Um, you, can, you kind of get a little bit more information here. And then so if I go to, okay, so this is the channel information graphic graph or whatever. Um, this is DT, the DTMF settings, and this is the optional feature settings. So it's a bit less um, it's not as it doesn't look kind of as fancy as like the uh, chirp software does. This looks a bit older, but in my mind that's not really a problem. There are some things that aren't here like um. So like, um, let's see, um, I don't see like the dis disabling of that stuff. So you have your timeout, timer, squelch level, Vox, voice enunciation, uh, I can't remember what ABR is. Um, your work mode stuff over here, your channel mode, um, your DTMF uh, settings, um, your A frequent A band and your B band. So that's the different selections on the different lines of the display. Um, your FM radio settings. Um, your power, basically all your settings here. Some, well, some of your settings. Um, this has a little bit less to it than um, some of the the other one, but if you want basic, I mean that's you kind of, that's what you get. You get basic with this. Um, 
so yeah but that's all I really have for now um, I've probably rambled long enough in this video oh and to upload to radio you can either so there's these buttons up here as well so I can write the data to the radio it's not gonna be any different from what I what it was on already but It's doing the, yeah. So anyway, that's all I have for this video. Um, it's a bit long and rambly, not gonna lie, but uh, I should have prepped for this more. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, leave a like, comment. If you didn't like it, you know what to do. You can hit the dislike. Um, Thank you for watching. Um, oh, I didn't realize I could do that. I didn't, re didn't realize I could pause the recording. God damn it. Anyway, um, thank you for watching and have a good day.